Hello everyone, Matt Hoots here with Sawhorse. I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite products that I like to use and specify on our job sites. Uh, one of them is the Zip System made by Huber, and another one is the Marvin, um, and any, any Marvin window is good. In this case, we happen to use the Marvin Elevate Series, which is a fiberglass on the outside, wood on the inside window. Uh, the reason I like these, these are designed not to leak. One of the things, if you're looking at the different types of control layers, and control layers are the things that make the inside stay dry and also comfortable. Um, one, of the, one of the control layers that we're, I want to discuss today is water and keeping water, bulk water out of the house and also water vapor out of the house. Now the zip system is designed with that in mind. It's basically, it's a sheathing that we have right here we tape over the seams and that with the coating that's on this acts as one of the weather resistant control layers. Now, if you're just installing siding or something like that, this works fine. Um, probably want to use a rain screen on top of it like with any other type of siding. Now, if you're going to you install stucco masonry, and in this case, we're gonna install masonry, we're gonna add another control layer on top of this, whether it's 15, 30 pound felt or some sort of house wrap on top of this because by the code, you want two different control layers. Now, all this being said, with the Zip system and the Marvin system going together, it's a very good system if it's installed correctly. So today we were walking through just um, doing an inspection, an internal inspection before we start to cover this up to see if we find any mistakes in the installation so we can go ahead and correct them. Uh, one of the things and one of the misperceptions about windows and doors, and I just want to talk about that really quickly. Uh, the reason I like Marvin, it does come with that nail fin. However, that nail fin is not supposed to act as flashing. Most people will say, hey, I'm just going to take this door, tack it in place with the nail fin, put a couple screws in, level it, boom, we're done. You have to do a lot more than that. There's three different things that you have to, or maybe even four different things you have to worry about when installing a window and door. First of all, from the outside, you have to deal with the flashing. The flashing Basically, it's designed as water is coming down this integrated drainage point. Water comes down and it's designed to take water out of the system. The next thing you have to worry about is sealant. So most people skip over sealant and whether it's Marvin, whether it's just a shop built window and door, you want to use the sealant. So the sealant, the way I like to do this is that you have the rough opening of the window or door, you seal around the outside of this. So when you push the window or door in place, it uh, forms a bond with either the brick mold that's attached to the, the shop built uh, window or door or it forms a bond with the the nail fin that is on this. Now for doors and windows you do want to seal them a little bit differently. So for doors you want to seal around, uh, you're going to have two pieces of nail fin on the sides, so one on each side, you're going to have a nail fin on the top. You want to make sure you seal around each of these um, on the sides and on the top. You also want to seal on the bottom, and this is a little bit different than windows, and we'll talk about that in a second. So you want to put a nice thick bead of sealant on the threshold before you put it in. That way the sill of the door is sealed to the subfloor, and hopefully the sill pan or flashing that you put in place. Now, along with that, then you want to install the insulation on the inside. So we've got, in this order, we've got the flashing on the outside, then we have the sealant, then we have the insulation. So the insulation is not supposed to be designed, in most cases, as your sealant. Um, this is strictly insulation. Insulation has an R value. It can stop some of the, 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 the air from coming in out, but it's not designed to, in most cases, stop moisture. Now, there are some that are designed to stop moisture as well. However, if you're just using the, the window and door half pound foam, that is not really designed to stop moisture. Uh, moisture. It's an open cell foam and it's just going to um, stop or, or just prevent for heat from coming in and out. That's why you need the sealant, which is the air barrier on the inside and the outside. So a lot of people fail to put that extra bead of sealant on the inside. And again, this is if you're using foam insulation. You want to make sure you seal the flashing and the, and the zip to the outside. And then you want to make sure that you also put an additional layer of caulk or sealant before you ins install the trim. The reason is this prevents the moisture uh, or prevents the air which is taking the moisture through the system. Now with some of these systems, we water, you know, it doesn't matter how well you design these, 
water is going to get into the system. So I want to talk about some of the, the points that I noticed on our particular installation and why these are not bad, but probably not the most ideal way of, of installing this. So for windows, and let's, let's look at this, this window detail, um, you want to seal around three of the sides, not the bottom, and so you're going to do the two sides, the top, Put the tape over it if you're using the zip system, but you don't want to seal the bottom. The reason you don't want to seal the bottom, if water gets into this assembly anywhere, you want to have a way for it to drain out. And if you have a drain pan or a sill pan on the inside, like you had it in the rough, rough framing, this allows the water to get out. If you, if you seal around all four sides, water gets into the system, it doesn't have a way of getting out and it can start causing rot in the framing and also it gets behind your weather resistant barriers, whether it's the house wrap or the zip system. So that's one common thing that I see with windows. Now for doors, I don't know why this happens, but it seems like every door installation, even when I take the time to go sit down with the door installers, like make sure you put that bead of sealant around the edge, especially if it's not a, a door that has the, um, the nail fin on it, that sealant never gets installed. So I make them tear it out, put it back in, with that sealant on it and nail it and nail it in place. But I would say a lot of the times, even when they're putting that bead of sealant um, underneath the sill, a lot of times I don't see it thick enough. So if you don't have it continuous from edge to edge, you might as well not put it put it in there at all. It's like wearing a rain jacket with holes in it, it's gonna get straight through that rain jacket. So another thing that I see painters come in and do is they basically screw up our whole system right here. And, and the reason they screw it up is like, these are designed if water does get in to allow water out. And a lot of these are either weep screeds, and, and that's usually on stucco or masonry, and you have weep holes on some of these windows and doors. Now we just did an inspection of this door and we'll show you some shots of that and what, where the weep holes are designed for water to get into the system, but also where it's designed for the water to get out of the system. Now on the inside, you wanna make sure that, that those holes are not caulked on the inside, so if water gets onto the threshold, then the water has a way of getting out. We did an inspection here and noticed that we had some sawdust in there. Again, probably not that big of a deal. Water eventually can get its way through there. However, if the painter comes along and seals that with silicone, well, that's gonna be a big issue. Also along the bottom threshold, you know, whatever the water, when the water is designed to get in, we also have a point for it to exit. Um, along the bottom, we've got the weed poles for them to come out the bottom of the threshold. Now, if you're installing masonry or um, some sort of other siding underneath this, make sure that you don't block those holes. Those, those holes need to breathe and those holes need to be um, open so water can get out of the system. Now again, I appreciate you guys watching this. We do believe in the system and we do believe that this system is very good if installed correctly. We appreciate you watching this video on how these things are supposed to work. So let's go over some of the points that we noticed in our particular installation. And again, I expect to find these mistakes. These are things that we always inspect for because you only get what you expect when you inspect. So in this particular case, on this door, whenever you have these flanges that come out, uh, the, the nail fin system, there are gaskets that you're supposed to install. And most of the people don't install those gaskets. But before you install those gaskets, those corners are weak points. You want to make sure that you have a good sealant behind those corners. That way any driving rain can't find its way in. Next on the window. Um, now again, the manufacturer does suggest that you seal all the way around um, on the front and use that zip tape. Now, however, with our particular installation, we want to make sure that that, that bottom flange nail fin does not get the sealant on the outside and also does not get the tape. This allows for any water that gets into the system into the sill pan for it to get out. Now you do want to seal it because the driving rain and winds can force some of that water into your wall assembly. So make sure that you have the sealants on the interior instead of on the exterior. But you do want the sealant on the sides and the head flashing. The last thing to be aware of the last thing that you need to be aware of is that these thresholds are designed for water to get in, but also water to get out. Because this is an in-swing door, the gasket is not going to be able to stop all the water from driving rain to come in through the door. So we have these weep holes right here, and these are areas where you, the water can actually collect in the jam, but also can also drain out the other side once the water collects into the jam. So you want to make sure that these stay free during construction, but also make sure that your painters don't paint or seal up these holes and especially on the outside if there's not a if they get sealed on the outside what's going to happen is this threshold is going to fill up full of water and it's going to 
back dam and come back into your house. So definitely keep these points in mind when installing and sealants on the inside and the exterior. And this is mainly for your painters to be aware of. Well, that's it for the Marvin punch list. In our next video, we're going to go over common things that we see with the zip wall system, and how we choose to fix them. And I'm going to go over the full list of items that we found on this particular job site. So you can try to avoid these things on your site, or if they do happen, you know how to fix them. Thanks again for watching this episode of Fresh Air Fridays and how we can control moisture coming in and out of your house and therefore helping your indoor air quality. For your convenience, we've loaded up additional videos and playlists. And if you haven't already, we'd love for you to subscribe so you can join us each Friday for Fresh Air Fridays. See you next time.